Welcome. Welcome back if you joined us last night. Today is Good Friday, the most sombre day of the Christian year where we remember Jesus' crucifixion and death. Today we'll be following him by using stations of the cross. We'll be using the scriptural stations rather than the traditional ones as they pick up where we left off last night with Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Stations of the Cross is essentially a biblical meditation. We'll follow Jesus from the Garden, through Pilate, to the Cross, and finally to the tomb, reflecting on what all this means for us and praying as we go. And then at the end of the service, we'll end in silence, a reminder that the story isn't yet over, that we'll pick up again on Saturday evening. So let's take a moment to be still as we prepare to walk beside Jesus on this, his final 24 hours. Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first station of the cross, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for even one hour? he asked Peter. Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus, why are you praying so intensely? I've seen you pray before. You chose your disciples. Before the fish and loaves multiplied. Before you raised Lazarus from the dead. But I've never seen you pray so intensely. Why such anguish, Lord? Is it because you can foresee the suffering to come? The scourging, the crowning with thorns, the carrying of the cross. Isn't this why you came to earth, to suffer and to die for us? Or is it because your loved ones do not have a clue as to what is to come. Look at Peter, James and John. They're all sleeping so soundly, unaware of your sufferings. Your suffering now, and your suffering to come. And when the time comes, will they abandon you, all except John? And yet you steal yourself, ready for the path ahead. Grant us your courage to walk the difficult paths, the way that we'd rather not walk. 
knowing that you've walked them before us. Let us pray. Lord, grant us your strength and wisdom that we may seek to follow your will in all things. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Station 2. Jesus is betrayed by Judas and arrested. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. How painful this must be for you, Lord, that one of your chosen ones is betraying you. You have been together for three years. You have been so good to him, loving him. It would have been better if he had left you like so many others who could not comprehend your teaching. That may have been more forgivable. But he turned against you, delivering up to your enemies, betraying you with a kiss. A kiss is a symbol of love and affection, of friendship and respect, but he has turned the kiss into a symbol of treachery and betrayal. He could have pointed you out among the crowd. He did not have to kiss you, but he did. How terrible Judas is. And yet, hasn't there also been a Judas in me so many times before? The same tongue that speaks words of worship and prayer at the next, speaking poison against others. Hands raised in worship or clasped in prayer, in the next moment refusing to help those in need. How often do I betray you in my own life? And yet you walk this path for me. Let us pray. Lord, Grant us the courage of our convictions, that our lives may faithfully reflect the good news you bring. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The third station. Jesus is condemned by the Sanhedrin. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me, and if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Lord, why do you answer questions like this? Why don't you just tell them categorically that you are the Messiah? Prove to them with some miracle or sign that you are God. But no, you didn't come to earth for that kind of recognition. You know that you are God. You do not need anyone to confirm that. No praise is needed, no glory added to your name. You did not come for glory. You came to show us the way to the Father, to die to save us from our sins, to show us how to live on earth, that we might live in eternity. And aren't these men experts in the scriptures? 
scholars of the law? Had they opened their minds to the scriptures, they would know you are the one spoken of, the one prophesied so many times. But their pride and lust for power blinded them. You are not one of them. The son of a carpenter could not be the Messiah. The Lord was right in front of them, and yet they did not recognise you. How often do I fail to recognise you? You say that in helping the least, we are helping you. How often do we fail to see your face in the prisoner, the homeless, the oppressed? How often are you before us, and yet we turn our face away? Lord, grant us your sense of righteousness, that we may never cease to work to bring about the justice of the kingdom that you promised. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The fourth station. Jesus is denied by Peter. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Lord, why did Peter deny you? Isn't he one of your favoured disciples, part of your inner circle? Didn't he say you were the Son of God? Didn't he say he was ready to die for you? And yet, when people started to accuse him of being one of your disciples, he denied that he even knew you, not once, but three times. Perhaps like Judas, Peter thought you were to become an earthly king, that you would lead an uprising against the Romans. When you were popular, he was not afraid of belonging to you. But now, when an unruly mob comes to condemn you, he becomes afraid. When he sees that you're, you, when he sees that you're not going to fight back, his courage fails. Fear overtook him, and he forgot to pray. He leant on his own strength alone, and it failed him. How often do we shrink from identifying ourselves as your disciples? Avoid the awkward conversations. And yet, you call us back to yourself, as you did Peter. Not once, but three times. Let us pray. Lord, grant us the gift of honesty that we may not fear to speak the truth, even when difficult. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The Fifth Station. Jesus is judged by Pilate. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, 
and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things, so again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged, and handed him over to be crucified. My Jesus, the world still has you on trial. It keeps asking who you are and why you make the demands you make. It asks over and over the question, if you are God's son, why do you permit the world to be in the state it is in? Why are you so silent? Though the arrogance of the world angers me, I must admit that silently in the depths of my soul, I too have these questions. Your humility frustrates me and makes me uncomfortable. Your strength before Pilate, as you drank deeply from the power of the Father, gives me the answer to my question, the Father's will. The Father permits many sufferings in my life, but it is all for my good. If only I too could be silent in the face of worldly prudence, steadfast in the faith when all seemed lost, calm when accused unjustly, free from tyranny of human respect, ready to do the Father's will, no matter how difficult. Silent Jesus, you give us all the graces we need to stand tall in the face of ridicule of the world. Give the poor the strength not to succumb to their privation, but to be ever aware of their dignity as children of God. Grant that we might not bend to the crippling disease of worldly glory, but be willing to be deprived of all things rather than lose your friendship. My Jesus, though we are accused daily of being fools, at the vision of quiet dignity standing before monstrous injustice, give us all courage to be your followers. Let us pray. Lord, grant us discernment, that we may see as you see, not as the world sees. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Station 6. Jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Lord Jesus, how could they do this to you? Do they not know that you are the source of all creation? the source of all life. They were not content to whip you. They scourged you, whipping you with a whip of three cords, weighted with lead balls and broken bone, lacerating your skin, your flesh torn from your back, your skin in ribbons. Already you are close to death. Already your blood pours forth. Were they not content to scourge you? That they weave thorns into a crown and press it upon your head? How great your pain must have been. I cannot even begin to imagine your suffering. And yet they are content not even now. 
hurling insults, spitting on you, humiliating you. Let us pray. Lord, grant us patience in times of suffering, that we may offer our lives as a sacrifice of praise. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Station 7. Jesus bears the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. But they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. How could any human impose such a burden upon your torn and bleeding body, Lord Jesus? Each movement of the cross drove the thorns deeper into your head. How did you keep the hatred from welling up in your heart? How did the just injustice of it all not ruffle your peace? The Father's will was hard on you. Why do I complain when it is hard on me? I see injustice and I am frustrated and when my plans to alleviate it seem futile, I despair. When I see those burdened with poverty suffer ever more and a cross is added to cross, my heart is far from serene. I utterly fail to see the dignity of the cross as it is carried with love. I would so much rather be without it. My worldly concept is that suffering, like food, should be shared equally. How ridiculous am I, dear Lord? Just as we do not all need the same amount of material food, Neither do we need the same amount of spiritual food. And that is what the cross is in my life, isn't it? Spiritual food proportional to my needs. Let us pray. Lord, grant us strength for purpose that we may faithfully bear our crosses each day. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The Eighth Station. Jesus is helped by Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. My Jesus, your tormentors enlisted a Simon of Cyrene to help you carry your cross. Your humility is beyond my comprehension. 
your power upheld the whole universe, and yet you commit one of your creatures to help you carry a cross. I imagine Simon was reluctant to take part in your shame. He had no idea that all who watched and jeered at him would pass into oblivion, while his name would go down in history and eternity as the one who helped his God in need. Is it not so with me, dear Jesus? Even when I reluctantly carry my cross as Simon did, it benefits my soul. If I keep my eyes on you and watch how you suffered, I will be able to bear my cross with greater fortitude. Were you trying to tell all those who suffer from prejudice to have courage? Was Simon a symbol of all those who are hated because of race, colour and creed? Simon wondered as he took those beams upon his shoulder why he was chosen for such a heavy burden, and now he knows. Help me, Jesus, to trust your loving providence as you permit suffering to weave itself in and out of my life. Make me understand that you looked at it and held it fondly before you, passed it on to me. You watch me and give me strength, just as you did Simon. When I enter your kingdom, I shall know, as he knows, what marvels your cross was wrought in my soul. Let us pray. Lord, grant us willing spirits, that we may be your instruments on earth. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The Ninth Station Jesus Meets the Women of Jerusalem We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? My Jesus, I am amazed at your compassion for others in your time of need. When I suffer, I have a tendency to think only of myself, but you forgot yourself completely. When you saw the holy women weeping over your torments, you consoled them and taught them to look deeper into your passion. You wanted them to understand the real evil to cry over was rejection, the rejection you suffered from the chosen people a people set apart from every other nation who refused to accept God's Son. The act of redemption would go on, and no one would ever be able to take away your dignity as Son of God. But the evil, greed, jealousy and ambition in the hearts of those who should have recognised you was the issue to grieve over. To be so close to God made man and miss him completely was the real crime. My Jesus, I fear I do the same when I strain gnats and then swallow camels, when I take out the splinter in my brother's eye and forget the beam in mine own. It is such a gift, this gift of faith. It is such a sublime grace to possess your own spirit. Why haven't I advanced into holiness of life? I miss the many disguises you take upon yourself and see only people, circumstances and human events, not the loving hand of the Father guiding all things. Help all those who are discouraged, sick, lonely and old, 
to recognize your presence in their midst. Let us pray. Lord, grant us gentle spirits that we may comfort those who mourn. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The Tenth Station Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothing by casting lots. It is hard to imagine a God being nailed to a cross by his own creatures. It is even more difficult for my mind to understand a love that permitted such a thing to happen. As those men drove heavy nails into your hands and feet, dear Jesus, did you offer the pain as reparation for some particular human weakness and sin? Was the nail in your right hand for those who spend their lives in wasted time and boredom? Was the nail in your left hand in reparation for all Christians who live lukewarm lives? Were you stretching out your arms to show us how much you love us? As the feet that walked the hot, dusty roads were nailed fast, did they cramp up in a deadly grip of pain to make reparation for all those who so nimbly run the broad road of sin and self-indulgence? It seems, dear Jesus, your love has held you bound hand and foot as your heart pleads for a return of love. You seem to shout from the top of that hill, I love you, come to me. See, I am held fast. I cannot hurt you. Only you can hurt me. How very hard is the heart that can see such love and turn away. Is it not true I too have turned away when I did not accept the Father's will with love? Teach me to keep my arms ever open to love, to forgive and to render service willing to be hurt rather than hurt, satisfied to love and not be loved in return. Let us pray. Lord, grant us merciful hearts that we may bring your reconciliation and forgiveness to all. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, Holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Station 11. Jesus promises his kingdom to the good thief. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insult, insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you were under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The thief on your right hand saw something he couldn't explain. He saw a man on a tree and knew he was God. His need made him see his own guilt and your innocence. The promise of eternal life 
made the remaining hours of his torture endurable. A common thief responded to your love with deep faith, hope and love. He saw more than his eyes envisaged. He felt a presence he couldn't explain and wouldn't argue with. He was in need and accepted the way God designed to help him. Like John the Baptist, here is a thief, a voice crying out in the wilderness alone, proclaiming you God and King amongst the unruly mob. May we hear these same words when you call us home. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. Lord, grant us perseverance, that we may never stop seeking you. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Station 12. Jesus speaks to his mother and the disciple. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, with the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Lord, how much you must have been aggrieved when you saw your beloved mother at the foot of the cross suffering, the sword spoken of by Simeon piercing her heart. How you must have longed to come down from the cross to embrace and console her. You could have, and yet you endured, pushed on to the end. In the midst of your suffering, you saw her suffering and had compassion, entrusting her to your closest friend and entrusting him to her. Even in your greatest pain, you showed them love and compassion. Even now, you are building your church. Show us the way, Lord, that we may show that same compassion and love even in the midst of the trials and distractions of our lives. Let us pray. Lord, grant us consistency, that we may be willing to stand by those in need. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The thirteenth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. God is dead, no wonder the earth quaked, the sun hid itself, the dead rose, and Mary stood by in horror. Your human body gave up its soul in death, but your divinity 
dear Jesus, continued to manifest its power. All creation rebelled as the word made flesh departed from this world. Man alone was too proud to see and too stubborn to acknowledge truth. Redemption was accomplished. Humanity would never have an excuse to forget how much you love them. Forgive our pride, dear Jesus, as we spend hours speculating, days arguing, and often a lifetime in rejecting your death, which is a sublime mystery. Have pity on those whose intelligence leads them to pride because they never feel the need to reach out to the man of sorrows for consolation. Let us pray. Lord, grant us trust in you, that when our time on earth is ended, our spirits may come to you without delay. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The Fourteenth Station Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. My Jesus, you were laid to rest in a stranger's tomb. You were born with nothing of this world's goods and you died detached from everything. When you came into the world, men slept and angels sang. And now as you leave it, Creation is silent, and only a few weep. Both events were clothed in obscurity. The majority of men live in such a way. Most of us live and die knowing and known by only a few. Were you trying to tell us, dear Jesus, how very important our lives are? just because we are accomplishing, accomplishing the Father's will? Will we ever learn the lesson of humility that makes us content with who we are, where we are, and what we are? Will our faith ever be strong enough to see power in weakness and good in the sufferings of our lives? Will our hope be trusting enough to rely on your providence, even when we have nowhere to lay our head? Will our love ever be strong enough not to take will our love ever be strong enough not to take scandal in the cross? Let us pray. My Jesus. Hide my soul in your heart as you lie in the sepulchre alone. Let my heart be as a fire to keep you warm. Let my desire to know and love you be like a torch to light up the darkness. Let my soul sing softly a hymn of repentant love as the hours pass and your resurrection is at hand. Let me rejoice, dear Jesus, with all the angels in a hymn of praise and thanksgiving for so great a love, so great a God, so great a day. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. As our Saviour taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.